Before we actually get to the point where we create an automated test script, I thought it's important to actually talk about the entire process from end to end in terms of how test automation works. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. And then in the next video, we'll actually install Selenium and get going with creating test scripts. But first again, as I said, let's take a look at the entire process of test automation from end to end. So the first thing that happens is QA and developers and anyone who else wants to will create test scripts and they will usually create these on their workstations and they will code them and then test them against whatever web application that needs testing. And usually what this means is you'll be testing your web application on a particular browser. It might be Chrome, it might be Firefox, and so on and so on. Now what happens is once you've finished your particular test script, you will usually upload those to an automated test server, which you can see right here. And this is the central repository. This is where all of the users will upload their scripts once they're done. And usually what happens is you'll have an entire library of test scripts. And then what happens is if a user needs to upload a particular test script, they will upload it to their desktop and then edit it and then send it back down. And then somebody else can go ahead and take that test script if it needs further editing. Now the automated test server doesn't just serve as a central repository. Usually you will also have some software on here that will then take all of these test scripts and send them down to the robots who will actually execute them. And usually what you'll have is a software package such as Jenkins. Jenkins is actually one of the big ones. A lot of companies will use that to manage a schedule. Usually what they'll do is they'll put the entire suite of test scripts on a schedule. And what happens is the automated test server will send down the test script to robots and they're called robots because this is where the true automation takes place. And then these robots will then execute the test scripts and then send the results back to the automated test server. And then what happens, those reports are usually sent to the stakeholders. These might be managers or the testers or whoever is on the list. It may come in the form of an email. It may come in the form of a report, a fancy report that has charts, all of those sorts of things. So that's really the key thing to remember here is that the robots are just sitting out there by themselves. And usually what happens is nobody's actually logging onto these machines. So the test scripts come down and again, they will be executed by the particular robot on whatever schedule they are set to. So they may kick the entire suite off at 11 a.m. And usually what happens is you'll have different robots. You might have 15 to 20 machines to divvy out the work. So maybe this first machine here would test against Firefox and this second machine would test against Chrome and so on and so on. And sometimes what you'll have is automated test scripts that test mobile applications. And a lot of times you'll have an emulator that's running on the desktop that the automated test script will kick off and it will conduct its tests using an emulator. Rarely will you actually have automated test scripts going against the physical device, but you can do that. But most of the time they will use an emulator and that's because emulators are just easier to use. Now, eventually you may have to do some manual testing on the physical device itself, but usually there are not a lot of differences between the emulator and the physical devices. There may be a couple driver issues, but for the most part, the emulators are much better than they used to be. So that's how the entire process works from end to end. Okay, I will see you in the next video where we will install Selenium.